Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So um, due to some questions that were asked on the forums about how to do things like folds around the elbow, um, I decided this week to talk about that. So let's call this Tip of the Week uh, Elbow Fold. Hopefully that is a good enough name for this. I couldn't think of a better name uh, for how to call this, but I guess that's kind of a descriptive name. So, um, you know, there's, as with any other rigging technique that, that we can talk about in uh, Toon Boom, there, there are multiple ways of achieving this. But um, what I'm going to show you here today is actually something that you could do in Animate, Animate Pro, or Harmony. And um, and then I'll show you something else next week that's something that only can be done in Animate Pro and Harmony, um, which is something really cool. So if, if we look at the rig that I've done here, what I'll show you this week is how we can set up these types of folds around the elbow and how we can animate those kind of folds. And then what I'll show you next week is how you can do something like this, where, let me zoom out here, where you have something like a sleeve and you can animate the position of the sleeve up. And you see as I'm animating this, it's like showing or hiding, um, you know, the, the sleeve there on the arm. So there's an arm layer underneath it and then there's a sleeve layer that, you know, if you want to push the sleeve up, if the character is pushing the sleeve up, they can actually push the sleeve up. So that's what I'll show you next week. But let's start with this week. And um, so what I want to show you this week is how we can set these folds up here. So I prepared some artwork for this week, and let me show you what I did. I've got an upper arm layer, and uh, let me just zoom out of my drawing view here so you can see what I've got. I've got an upper arm layer. Um, if you are working with um, the pencil lines, then when you are doing things um, that are going to require um, patches that are overlapping each other. It's sometimes easier to do that with brush lines, so I did do this with brush lines. Um, I started out with a pencil line uh, version of it, and sometimes when I'm doing a rig, um, if I know that I want to go back and modify the size of my, um, or the thickness of my lines later, I'll do two versions of the same drawing. I'll have my brush line version that I can use for my patch, and I'll have another version of this drawing that will be a pencil line version, so that I can go back later on and adjust the size of the line and recreate my patch from it very easily. And so, um, in this case, I've got just this version that's a, that's a brush line version of this drawing, um, but you could have two drawings in there. And when you are doing pencil lines, it helps to have the, um, the actual pencil line separated from the uh, fill. And in which case, if you're using Anime Pro or Harmony, or if you're using advanced mode on animate, you can separate using these sublayers. In your drawings, you have the ability to um, draw on these sublayers the overlay, line art, color art, and underlay. And these are useful just to um, to separate things out on the same drawing layer. And keep in mind that when you animate a drawing layer, it animates all of these sublayers together. But if I want to do something where I want to separate part of it out and I'll show you this uh, for next week's session. This will be important for when we are talking about this arm down here. Uh, when you want to be able to separate things out, you can separate the line art and the color art out on their own when you're using this networking stuff. So we'll talk about that more next week and I'll go into more detail with that. But just to show you on the artwork, um, you can separate this onto line art and color art. In this case, I did it all on the line art for this upper arm layer. And, um, and that's totally fine. So I prepared an upper arm layer, and then I also prepared a lower arm layer. And in my lower arm layer, um, by the way, on, on both of these layers here, I used that um, circle joint technique that I showed in an earlier drawing. Because I knew that I was going to do this weird sleeve thing next week, what I did was I did the upper arm with the full color of the sleeve, and I did the lower arm with the full color of the arm because I knew I only wanted to be able to push the sleeve up to the elbow. Uh, but you can um, think about ways of doing this depending on what you need for your shot or what you need for your show. So if I have the, um, if I have the sleeve as a full length sleeve always, then I'll just draw it as a full length sleeve. I'll just draw it directly on here. The only reason I did this um, ability here to animate this is because I wanted to just show you something extra. 
And uh, but if you don't need to do something extra, if you're just always going to leave that sleeve where it is, which is the case in I say 90% of the scenarios out there, then you can just draw where the sleeve ends directly on there. And um, when you're drawing something like a sleeve, you always want to draw one version that's facing down. So that's what you would see if the camera is looking down on the arm. And then you'd want to have one version that's facing up for when the arm is faced towards the camera. And um, I'll talk about that one also a little bit more next week when I talk about this drawing layer here, because I'll do both versions. But um, to finish up describing what I did to prepare the artwork, so I did this circle joint technique that I did go over on an earlier tip of the week. If you missed that one, you can go back there. But I did the circle joint technique. Um, let me just move this drawing over. So I did the circle um, technique with a drawing layer that has, oops, and I, uh, sorry, I had put my pivot on my um, peg layer there. So I did the circle joint technique, and I have the uh, lower arm layer just as the entire uh, skin color, and the upper arm layer as the entire shirt color. But when you're doing this, if you're going to do it, you could draw the sleeve directly on here, as I mentioned. So it's up to you uh, whether you want to follow along with the complex rig that I'm doing. So if you are following along with the complex rig that I'm doing, you can prepare the lower arm just with the skin color, and then you can prepare the upper arm just with the sleeve color, and then next week you can follow along when I show you how to add this extra sleeve bit on top there. But for this week, the other pieces of artwork that I prepared was I prepared four um, of these kind of um, half little fold things, which is what the elbow fold is all about. And uh, when we look at this artwork, I did separate this out into line art and color art just because I'm using a pencil line here. And when you use a pencil line, you do want the fill to go underneath. Uh, but you don't really have to do it on separated line art and color art. It's, it was just my preference to do it that way for this particular example. So I've got here four folds and I put the folds on each side of the wrist and then when we look at how we're going to rig this thing what we want to do for those of you who are working in animate um, you can just do your rig as a direct parent-child relationship by dragging the drawing layers on top of each other in your timeline same way that you would with any other animate thing so you can just drag the layers on top of each other in this case I'm working with peg layers if you are working with peg layers then you can do that but if you're an animate and you're not working with peg layers, you can just drag and drop those directly on top of each other. And in terms of how you want the hierarchy to look on these four drawings, that's kind of subjective because no matter how you animate this thing, you're going to have to do some adjustments. So let's say if I want to take this lower arm and I want to bend the lower arm, I'll show you what the rig looks like after, but let's just start by looking at how the end result works. So if I go up the parent to the parent, and I have a parent peg in this case so that I can gather together different layers. So in my parent peg, I've gathered together the lower arm layer and the sleeve here, the, the downward facing sleeve, and two of the folds. But if I animate this upwards, you know, I, I'm always going to have to make adjustments here. So the folds follow the arm, which kind of does something useful. But on the other hand, um, and I'm just going to turn on peg selection mode on my transform tool because I'm using pegs here, but okay, so, so I, I, if I rotate that arm upwards, I still need to make adjustments on this to make this look make sense. Like I can't just leave this looking like this. That doesn't look good. I would have to go back on each of these folds and kind of just make some small adjustments there so I can animate those looking like that and then I can take the lower one and I can kind of make them match so on and so forth but those adjustments don't take me very long to do and the end result looks pretty good um, and obviously you can fiddle with these and and maybe you need an additional fold maybe you have a fold that appears only when the elbow is bent um, maybe you have a sharp elbow instead of a round elbow like I do here it really, um, it all depends on what look you want to get out of it at the end. And, and we're very flexible here on what we can do because you're, you're defining what these drawings look like and the positioning of the drawings yourself. And I think it kind of makes sense when these things line up with each other, but they don't really have to. I mean, you could have a fold that goes like that, they're like overlapping folds. 
but the only thing to be aware of is you want it to make sense while it's animating. So if I go back to the position that I had it in before, because I did put a keyframe on there, let me just, um, I'm just undoing to get back to my default position that I had before. What's nice about this, do you see how this animates pretty well? I have that base keyframe and then I have the keyframe where I moved everything. And you know, it does a it does a pretty decent job on, on showing what I want to show there. I get the animation, I get the things lining up pretty well, and um, and it in-betweens very nicely because as with everything else that we're doing, we're just moving the position of drawing layers. So when we're just moving things, it always works really nicely. And if you want to, as you're doing this animation, you can also take these folds and you can scale them up or scale them down. And don't forget that you can skew as well. So if you need to or want to skew drawings, that's also a trick that you can pull out of your bag of tricks. So um, it's useful to get these kind of lining up a little bit nicely. And then as we look at that animating out, it's going to do a nice job for us. It's going to do the trick. So um, let's finish up this tip of the week for this week by taking a look at how we actually rig this thing. So um, for those of you who are working in Animate, you'll have your upper arm layer, and then you'll drag and drop your lower arm layer to be a child of your upper arm layer, just like you always would when you're doing a, um, um, a rig for a character. Now, um, you could do what I did here, and what I did here was I also made the two inside folds a child of the lower arm layer. And the reason I did that is because I figure most of the time you kind of want those folds on the, on the inside there to follow what that's doing. But no matter what you do, you're always going to have to make adjustments to those drawings. So it doesn't really matter whether you make the folds a child of that lower arm or not. I think that's up for you to decide on your drawing whether it makes sense for your drawing for them to be because no matter what you do you're going to have to do a little bit of adjustment here.